Hey everybody. I'm early, so don't panic. Um, I'm gonna wait just a little bit to get started. I just wanted to let you know what I'm using. For today's look. Okay. How's everyone doing? I jumped on a little bit early. Just looking to see if I have some almond nails in a box. Hey! don't. Does anyone else's drawer have things like this? Or am I the only one? <laughs> I feel like, um, oh, well, here's some almonds. It's exactly what I needed, actually. Um, I feel like I grab these nails so often to do, like, just little demos and samples that, um, oh my goodness, Charlene. Ugh. Sounds so Spicy. Yeah, it's been hot. I spent um, I spent a lot of time outside yesterday in the sun uh, building. I was trying to build something with my, I was trying to get my kids to help me, which, you know, <laughs> that's always fun. Uh, so, hey, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So, um, oh, I just wanted to show you my shirt because I'm so excited about it. I ah, hope you like it. Wildflowers Competition Crew. It's my little shirt. Um, we do have a meeting tomorrow night. Uh, those of you who are part of the Wildflowers Competition Crew, tomorrow night's meeting is, uh, we are doing a mock French pink and white acrylic competition in the mock competition room. And then in our other room, we will be having uh, just time to work on our art project. So if you're part of the Wildflowers Competition Crew, it probably says this backwards. I feel like it's a mirror image, but I don't know, maybe you can read it backwards. But anyway, uh, yeah, so excited for tomorrow's meeting. So if you're a part, um, I hope that you're excited about it too. I'm really excited. Um, just jumped on here a couple minutes early. I wanted to show y'all what I'm working with tonight. Um, I'm gonna do just some like fall-ish type of nail art. We're getting ready to uh, head on into the fall season and um, you know, all of those really uh, warm colors start coming in. We start seeing that a lot more in the salon. So we will see um, grays start to pop up, like charcoal grays, and we'll start to see like the rusty orange colors and even like the yellows. Um, purples, colors like that. I love this time of year because I love the smell of fall leaves. It brings me back to my childhood. Um, I know a lot of you love pumpkin spice, that type of stuff. Uh, but I really do enjoy um, the art and the colors and how everything goes from being like really bright to being a lot more, um, I don't know, having more depth to it. Uh, and a little more weight to the colors. So uh, I'm going to do some uh, like what I would consider salon art designs, but it sort of reminds me of, let me see if I can like point to these nails up here. Y'all see these ones up here that have um, like the, the really cool looking, it's hand painted. Um, the lines are a little wiggly and wavy up there. I love those nails so much. Um, what I love about them is like the organic feel of them, how the lines kind of wiggle and wobble and it looks like something that um, definitely was done by hand. It doesn't look like a stamp or, you know, something that was manufactured. So today what we're gonna do is uh, dots and lines and we're gonna do some cool stuff for fall. I'm gonna flip my phone here in just a second and show you uh, what the inspiration is. I, I have an inspiration board that I keep on Pinterest and just any time that I see something cool uh, that I think could inspire me for a future nail, I love to add it to my Pinterest board. So uh, this is something that I've just had on my Pinterest board because I love the intricacy of all the dots and lines. Yeah, 
I love dots and lines too. And I feel like everybody can do dots and lines. Like, oh, or at least we like to think that we can all do dots and lines, right? Let me grab some gloves and I'll flip my camera down and show y'all what I am going to use today. Excuse me, my dog is um, just laying right, right across my floor, like blocking so I can't open the doors to my cupboard. Let me pull my hair up first. Oof. So I was telling, I've told a couple of my friends, I had a very uh, fun thing happen yesterday. I like dislocated two of my ribs, okay? I don't know if you've ever dislocated a rib, but it is not fun. It is extremely painful to dislocate ribs. Very painful. And um, I have done it quite a bit. And the first probably couple of years it started happening, I didn't know it was happening. Now I know what it is because I see uh, like a chiropractor and a medical massage therapist regularly. So anyway, last night I dislocated two of my ribs and my diaphragm was spasming. I don't know if you've ever had your diaphragm spa spasm, but oh my gosh, it's horrible. You're like, Ugh, and you can't even like, it just contracts like, Ugh, like that. It's a horrible feeling. Horrible. It's horrible. So anyway, um, I, um, I was praying so hard because I was, uh, supposed to sing at church this morning and I was like, oh no, I'm not going to be able to sing. And you know, it's not something that I get to do very regularly because of my schedule. So when I do get to do it, I'm always like looking forward to it and excited about it. So I was like, no. Um, and so crazy. I woke up at like, I don't know, maybe f four or five in the morning and I was just so desperate to figure out. I kept on like pushing on my back and trying to figure out like how to pop the ribs back in place and I couldn't get them to pop back in place. And so um, finally I walked in my bathroom and I looked at my bathtub. We have like a big bathtub that's got like a big round kind of white edge on it. And I just like leaned forward and pressed the front of my ribs into it. And I felt my ribs pop back into place. It was a crazy feeling. It was so like, it was just crazy to put pressure on the front of my ribs and have that happen. But it was like so bizarre and crazy when that happened. Um, but I'm, I'm excited because I was telling Aaron earlier, like I feel like if it was like the end of the world and I couldn't go see anybody, I'd be able to like almost adjust my own back if I had to, like, you know, for emergency purposes. Or when I'm traveling, because it's happened before where I've been out on the road, and I remember I was teaching a class once, and I had a dislocated rib. At the time, I didn't know what it was that was happening, but um, I had a dislocated rib, and I could hardly breathe to even talk to the class. Like, I couldn't move my back. Like, I was stiff as a board, and I could hardly breathe. <laughs> so, anyway, um, oh, what a nightmare. I wouldn't wish it upon anyone uh, to experience it. But anyway, it still is interesting. So yeah, my uh, a little sore, but otherwise uh, in good shape and happy, much happier now. But yeah, so bizarre, the human body, I'm telling you, it's crazy. All right, let me flip around here and I'm gonna show you our inspiration. We're just gonna go with, um, uh, like I said, a Pinterest sort of inspiration and, uh, oh goodness gracious, what's going on here? I just don't want it to yell at me and tell me to turn my camera. So um, here's my phone and I love this so much, so, so much, like every bit of it. I love all of it. I love the, the bowls. I love the prints. I love, um, I just love this look. I think it's so organic and it's so neat. And as you're examining these, I mean, you can see even the color tones. This is what's, oh gosh, nope, didn't mean to do that. What's cool is you can see the color tones down here that are actually in the palette. And you'll see right here, there's like a navy blue uh, that that works as a backdrop over here. And even for these bowls, the, the background of these bowls is actually more of like a gray blue. Um, but yeah, I love that they make this color palette for you. So I'm not going to get too crazy. I'm going to keep it simple this evening um, and probably go with something maybe like over here. Um, I, I sort of like this kind of like 
wibble wobbly like lines and the way that the dots follow the lines and then I like the way that the dots come out from the line so I was thinking about going in that direction maybe um, definitely a matte finish on this I do um, just to explore ideas I really do like the way the center of this one has sort of a uh, reflective quality to it so I feel like if you wanted to take some black paillettes um, and go down the center of a nail and kind of coat over those even with matte top coat um, the black paillettes still will have sort of a reflective glare to them it's it's really kind of cool so an option two I would say for colors we could go with chef crispy we could go with black we could go with the color called thunder so a lot of different color choices that we have here um, I happened to grab uh, just void, which is just our black, so I'll probably go with that. But uh, y'all know I do love um, I do love me some Chef Crispy. But yeah, I love doing nails like this. It challenges me, and here's why. Um, you know, as you can see, these lines are very imperfect. The dots are very imperfect. And I think for some of us who are a little bit of perfectionists and, um, you know, maybe, ah, I don't know, we like to get stuff just perfect and have control over everything. Um, I, I wasn't like that before, but I find that the older I get, the more I do like to be in control. Um, I don't know. It's just like, I don't know if it's something that comes with age, maybe. I mean, I just turned 40, but I definitely feel like I have a sense that like I do want to be in control a lot more than I have a sense that I don't want to be in control, if that makes sense to you. So uh, what I'll be working with today is I just grabbed some black gel polish. I only grabbed two tools for brushes. I grabbed my gold brush. Uh, you can use the gold vegan or just the gold uh, sable hair brush. And I also grabbed our dotting tool that we have at Wildflowers that has these cute little pearls inside of it. Uh, definitely has very small little tips, two very small tips on it. So it has like a little tiny one. And then it's got one that's a little bit bigger, but we definitely chose two small sides for this dotting tool. So these are the only um, like tools that I'm actually going to use. Uh, I grabbed my matte top coat, of course, and then I grabbed just three colors of uh, this um, painting gel. Um, I'm going to maybe add a little bit of white to these, uh, to these colors. Um, I'm going to see kind of what happens on a black palette. So... If you don't have our flower palette, what's cool is it's black. So this is going to give us a good indication of how well our colors are actually going to show up um, on the nail that we do. And, uh, you know, especially when you kind of press it on here, you'll be able to see, like, is this going to be opaque or um, maybe not so much? It's looking like it's probably going to be pretty opaque. At least to me it does. And let's get the siren red is another really popular color that we have and I'm going to squirt that out it's a very bright nice bright red color and then I'll also squirt a little bit of the white these are the white painting gels so love me some painting gels um I feel like it's a little bit hard to do dots with something of this viscosity the painting gels were originally formulated like they're they were formulated to do a lot of things but first and foremost was for one stroke so as you can see um they definitely like don't have a runny viscosity at all so uh what I like to do if I know I'm gonna be doing dots is I like to take just some of our white gel polish. Our white gel polish is called tissue paper. And I like to put a little blob of our white gel polish here. And sometimes I like to come in and just whip these two together a little bit for the purpose of dotting. Um, what it does is it gives me sort of an in-between the two kind of viscosity, which I like a lot because I feel like just the gel polish by itself is just a little bit too runny um, and I feel like the painting gel by itself is a little too thick for doing dots so whipping these two together really does it for me um, I feel like it it works really well I'm gonna just take this leftover white and come over here and uh, brighten this baby up just a hair see if we can get this just a little bit brighter 
It looks pretty good to me. Remove that excess, which I can just remove sort of by rolling it on here. And I think we're pretty much off to the races. We're ready to go. Um, yeah, I love doing art like this because it's unique. Like, sometimes it's fun not to copy people. Not saying for you guys not to, like, copy this design and try it. But, I don't know. There's times that I get a little tired of doing, like, foo-foo flowers and just the typical stuff that we do. And I think it's fun to find some, um, you know, different kind of, like, textiles to sort of experiment and just try new things that can be kind of unique and turn out being really cool looking. So there's a coat of Void. That's our black gel polish. I did try to apply it pretty thin. I'm going to go ahead and um, cure that for 30 seconds in my LED light. We're going to do one more quick coat of, uh, of Void. So our, our gel polishes, if you don't have them, they're pretty pigmented. Um, I do still recommend, uh, doing them in two coats though. It's easy to want to just, you know, go with one coat and be done with it. And a lot of them, can you get away with it? Yeah, you can. Um, but you're always safer to just stick with, uh, doing two thin coats. So I'm always going to recommend two thin coats just because it's a good habit to have with gel polish colors. Also, sometimes if you apply stuff kind of on the thick side, what'll happen is you'll you'll lose control of your shape a little bit. And that's no fun cuz nobody wants a nobody wants a lumpy nail. And of course, I can see a little fuzz down here. Just try to get that on our way off of the nail. I think we got it. Hopefully we got it. If not, the good news is that this nail is going to have sort of an organic texture to it. So we don't have to be too perfect. Gonna cure that in the light for 30 seconds. Um, one thing that I am gonna do is, and you don't have to do this, but sometimes when I'm doing hand painted stuff, I like to just put a layer of matte top coat. Again, do you have to do this? No, you don't. But I just like to because I like the way the brush sort of catches when I'm working on a mat. And if I'm doing something delicate with small dots or small lines, um, I don't have to worry about the light line sort of messing with my eyes. Y'all know what the light line is. Um, if you don't know what the light line is, it's these little white lines that you see. You can see like there's circle ones and there's straight ones. These are the reflection of my lights. Um, this is my hand up here. I don't know if you can see my crazy looking hand reflecting on the nail, but um, my light up here is creating this line. And when I'm trying to do delicate stuff with white, it's super annoying to have a white light line on the nail. So. Coating the nail uh, with a matte top coat is a great way to eliminate that. And uh, you'll be able to see what you're doing just a little bit better. Again, it's kind of a convenient step. So if it's not too much trouble to do that, I'm going to recommend doing it. Um, if you're competing, if you're in a rush, I would say skip it and you're just going to have to deal with the reflection. Um, I'm just looking at my colors. I feel like I want this orange to be a little bit more yellow. So I'm gonna take this uh, banana color. Banana is kind of like a pastel yellow, still pretty bright. And let's whip this around and just lighten this up. Oh yes, that's what I'm talking about right there. Yeah. It's looking for more of like a peachy, a peachy orangey color. So there we go. That is perfect. And we have a nice bright flaming red. We've got our white already whipped together. Again, uh, if you're just joining, we are using sort of this type of uh, textile look as inspiration. And we decided to go uh, with something up here on the top right. Notice how imperfect the lines look. Notice that the dots aren't perfect. 
Um, that's the beauty of this art. Oh, I love how the lines are just sort of wibble wobbly. They're not scratchy lines. They're solid lines, but they're just kind of wibble wobbly. And another thing that I love, this is uh, clearly it looks like a print to me, um, just as an artist who's done a lot of art through the years. Do you see how, um, like this is something, look right here on these dots. Do you see the black dot inside the white dot? This is something that happens um, when you're using a dotting tool to make your dot. So I feel like whoever the artist was who made this print um, or, you know, just painted this by hand, uh, definitely use like a big dotting tool to do their thing. And we're just going to use the same thing. So even if we press down into our dotting tool and end up getting that little black dot inside of there, like cool, it makes it look even more authentic, like what we're trying to do. And now, as you can see, I don't really have to fight with the light line um, while I'm doing my art, which is helpful. It really is helpful. So again, either the yellow uh, vegan brush or the gold brush will uh, suffice for what we're about to do. And I'm just going to go in and start with my red. Now, um, I haven't used these brushes in probably like, oh, uh, maybe a week or two. So uh, it's always fun at the very beginning when you're loading your brush because you're like, wake up little brushy, wake up and stretch and stretch all your bristles out. So um, you're gonna see me take a moment. I'm gonna put this in here and I'm really gonna press and I wanna see like those hairs flipping around. I don't wanna have like a solid, um, see how they're, they're flipping around at the end? I don't wanna just have a solid clump of bristles. Uh, so spin it, turn it a little bit, uh, load it up on all sides. We're going to make an imperfect line. And so just going to uh, put my brush down and kind of drag it through here. Now we don't want the line to look like scratchy. So what are you impatiently waiting for? We might have it already. Ah, I can't see your comment. I can't see it. Oh, I'm trying so hard to see the comment, but every time I do it, it, uh, oh, there it is, Patricia, the green micro. I, you know what? Somebody said it was on the website last week. You can check. Or did you order it already? You're just waiting for it to come in the mail. <laughs> I, I, I'm pretty sure they said it was on the website. I've had such a crazy month. Um, we're, we're like expanding our warehouse up here. So we've had like trees coming down and, um, we're getting ready to get the foundation laid for it. And, um, I have, uh, not had a moment to catch up on product releases. We haven't been doing like, we did our white ink, um, but we haven't been doing like a whole lot of product releases, uh, this month just because we're kind of in a, um, oh, it says out of stock. Well, gosh, I'll fix that for you. I uh, will fix that. They're not out of stock. Trust me. Not out of stock. All right. So uh, what you want to do when you're making a line like this, okay, and this is going to be hard for some of you, but like I have a pretty even thickness and you're going to have to change that if you really want it to look like kind of organic looking. So uh, you're going to have to get in here and you're going to have to... Um, you're going to have to make it kind of thicker in places and thinner in other places, okay? I know it's going to be against your, um, for those of you who are precision artists, it might be a little bit against your comfort. I guess if that makes sense, uh, you're probably not going to want to do that, but you need to, okay? And then I'm going to come over to this other side as well and get a bit of a wibble wobbly line going over here. Thickening it up, making sure I've got um, a full pigment load. Again, we don't want it, and we're not trying to go scratchy, but we are trying to have some variation. in the thickness of the line. All right, cool. Now, 
Uh, the way I like to switch colors is I like to take just a cotton round like this. I like to fold my brush inside and just pinch, just like that. Might do it a time or two. Um, sorry, I'm trying to kind of, there we go, just like that. And typically I'm able to just switch colors. Unless I'm switching to like a white or something like that where it really needs to be a super clean brush. I usually have no trouble switching between colors uh, like that. So here we go. We're going to leave a uh, space in between here and just kind of follow along. I'm excited. This is the type of art that I like to wear on my nails. Like if I'm gonna wear something, I wanna wear something kind of unique and different. And I always used to appreciate my customers who came in who were the same way. Like they wanted something cool. Um, they wanted something that wasn't like too crazy because they didn't have like too, too much money to spend on nail art stuff. But, <laughs> They, uh, they enjoyed, let's cook this. They enjoyed getting a design that was kind of unique and that would catch people's eye. So again, this is kind of what we're working on here. We're going to get ready to do some dots. I love this one too, uh, a lot. I feel like you could do some variations from nail to nail, but I think what I'm going to do is kind of follow along. So I have my, my two lines there and I'm just going to follow along uh, with some dots, some like very small little dots, do, 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 all along my line on the one side, at least two rows of dots like that. And then on the other side, we're going to do some of these kind of stripes. This should be fun. It reminds me of um, the art that they do on like the rocks. You ever seen them do that? I like to see them screw up because I like to see them fix it. It's always very interesting watching how they fix it. So we are going to try to keep our dots really close together, but we really are trying hard not to let them touch. We don't wanna let them get too far apart. Make sure they're steadying your hand when you do this. So um, this is my pinky right here. This is my thumb right here. So when I'm working, um, I keep my thumb locked against my pinky so that I can steady myself. And I have my hand on the table and my um, both of my hands actually are on the edge of the table. Make sure you take your design off the edge of the nail. It's another thing that um, makes a pretty a pretty big difference artistically. And this is where I think another place where artists just, you get in a rush, keep your dots close together. If you spread your dots out too much, what's going to happen is it's just, it's just not going to look right. You really do want it to look like a line of dots. So I am giving it a little bit of a space. And back in and you'll see, I mean, the dots definitely get smaller in size as you go. So, um, you know, you want to do like four or five dots and then reload and do four or five more dots and four or five more dots. These are the designs that I love doing. These are the designs that like if your customer sneezes, you want to punch them. Yes. <laughs> I say let's do one more row. I think one more row would look good over here. Oh, look, I touched my dots together. Okay, let's stop here and like figure out if we wanna do something about this. Now we can leave it. 
And it's really not that big of a deal. Um, there's, there's a few ways to take care of this. We can take a little tiny, tiny bit of black paint and just be like, boop, between the two of them. Or we could actually like wipe this off really fast because it would take like two seconds to redo those dots. So we have several options. Um, this is a silicone tool. Um, if I want to, you could come in and try to separate them, but then it doesn't look like dots, right? So I'm just going to come in and literally just kind of smear them off real fast. That was pretty quick and easy. Um, but depending on like who it is and how much I actually care, I may have just left them to be honest. Now, if I had three dots in a row, then I probably wouldn't leave them. But I think two dots in a row isn't terrible. Make sure you leave a space between your line of dots. Does that make sense? Like, you should be seeing a pretty clear black space between your lines of dots, it is going to make a difference. If you put your lines of dots cl too close together the other way, they're not going to look like lines of dots anymore. It's just going to look like a bunch of dots over there. So it's going to kind of lose its uh, effect in a way. All right, so let's check in. Um, let's cure this just to keep it safe, and we'll check in with our design. Sometimes it's good to just stop and check in with the design you're working on. So this is what we're working on right over here. And so I've got a few rows of dots going on. Um, we just chose to do three. I think they have six rows, but of course we're working on a much smaller canvas. And so, okay, let's see. Looks like in this one year, all of the rows are just going straight across, which was kind of my game plan. I wasn't trying to get too crazy. But as you can see in this middle one, you're going to see a variation in rhythm here. So um, meaning it's like, bu -bu 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 oops, on that one. But let me see if I can like even, I don't know if it'll let me zoom. Will it? Oh, yes, that will let me zoom. Cool. Um, so we sort of have like a nice even spread of dots on some of them. And then we have ones that are kind of like boop, 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 boop. This one looks like it's like ba 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 like that. So you can kind of see, and again, like theirs isn't perfect either. Look, they got dots touching. So don't drive yourself too crazy. It's really just the overall look that we're going for here. Um, same thing, like how cool is this one with the dots that are actually weaving back and forth like that? So whatever, you know, you want to try, go for it. Um, I'm just going to try to do some straight across rows of dots. I think they'll look really cool. And I think this nail itself is just going to be really cool looking. So again, and I'm using the smaller side um, of the Wildflowers dotting tool, in case you're wondering. So we're going to come in and we're just going to go across. And the lines don't have to be perfect. If you don't want it to seem like it started on one side and went to the other, you could always start in the middle. Ooh, I like it. Once you really, um, get comfortable doing dots and lines. You'll be able to manage the pressure that you put down when you're doing dots. And by managing your pressure, you can control the size of the dot. However, that's something that takes time to develop. Um, artistically, it's not something that happens overnight for people. And it takes a really um, delicate touch 
to be able to control your pressure when you're pushing down on your dotting tool to kind of cheat and make a smaller dot or a bigger dot when you want a dot to appear smaller or larger. But man, thank God for uh, for painting gels and gel polish. I don't know for those of you watching like back in the day, um, I started doing nails when we didn't have gel polish or gel paints. So all of the stuff that we did back in the day, we had to do with regular nail polish. I mean, I caught the tail end of it. Um, I really entered in probably 2005, four or five is when um, I really started doing nails like in the salon, barely, <laughs> say like barely doing nails uh, in the salon. But yeah, all of this had to be done with nail polish. So the tricky thing was like, man, if you screwed it up, like you just had to start over. <laughs> I've used craft paint too. I was like, yeah, I I went from like nail polish eventually over to like craft paints because I was like, well, they're definitely like, they don't get gummy. I felt like nail polish a lot of times would get really gummy. And I just hated working with it. I'm going to let my design sort of go off the top right there. So pretty cool, right? And then what are we going to do on the other side? Should we do a line of dots again? Sure, why not? I think the line of dots is pretty cool. I mean, we used to sell acrylic water-based paints. That was like what we used to do one stroke with and a lot of our nail art. I was laughing like at <laughs> my videos from back in the day when I was starting wildflowers. And you know, it was funny, the whole... The whole reason that I really started doing products was because like I wanted to teach so bad and I was using this stuff and I was mixing my own um, paints and pigments and cutting my own brushes and every time I teach a class everybody always wanted what I used and it was uh it wasn't I don't want to say it was like annoying but it was just like it wasn't something that I was able to, I couldn't keep up with the demand like, I couldn't cut everybody's brush for them in my class. Like, everybody just wanted, like, it was lunch break. And they were just like, can you cut my brush on your lunch break? And I was like, Ugh, I guess. <laughs> and so it was like, I would just sit there and cut brushes the whole time for everybody. Because, you know, if you cut one person's brush, then everybody wants the brush cut. And so that was just how we used to do stuff back in the day. Ooh, very cool, very cool. I like it. And I actually, I like this part kind of naked over here, so I'm not going to fill it in. I'm going to leave it because it just does something with the way that, like, this sort of curves up. Gives it some nice movement, and I really like it. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and cure. I love this nail. I love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. I love it for a lot of reasons, and I especially love it because for me, I feel like this is something that I would totally do in the salon. This is something I would totally wear. This is something my clients would totally love to wear. And what's really fun about it is like you can you can make the nails look different. Like not every nail has to be the same. So if you wanted to play with like the crisscross dots right over here, you could play with the crisscross dots on a nail. Or, um, you know, I really actually love this one in the bottom corner. I love the way these orange parts actually look like it's like pointillism, like it's made from little dots. So I think that doing this one would be super cool because like if I was doing this nail, I would do my navy blue first, then I would have fun, I think, doing the white in these like white sort of goofy looking like patterns and lines. And then it would be fun to go in and just fill in with all these little orange dots because um, clearly the orange dots are touching, they're overlapping, and I think it would be neat to be able to do, you know, multiple coats of the orange dots. Really cool. But this one, uh, pretty simple. I'm going to go ahead and give it a, a coat of matte top coat to finish. 
and when the matte top coat goes over, it's really going to kind of pull it all together. Um, it'll flatten the design and soften all of it. And this is always my favorite part, like those ones that I showed you on my back wall just a minute ago. Um, same thing, it just like kind of melts together and looks so nice when the matte goes over. Checking my light line to make sure I've covered it all pretty well. All right, let me get this into my light. So how easy was that? Lots of, uh, lots of cool stuff, lots of simple stuff that you can really do with just a dotting tool and a basic brush. So if you're newer to nails or you know someone who's newer to nails and you're just starting off and you're just looking for um, a good starting point or a good place to get started, you know, just getting like our gold brush is such a great brush to have. Oh, I mean, we've got, we've got really great brushes, but, um, having these essential tools really will help you when you're, when you're getting started. So I definitely want a little brush. You definitely want a little dotting tool. And, you know, even if you can't get, um, gel paints, uh, as long as you have a good white, I think having a good white is super important because you can take a red that's a little see-through that might not be the best quality and you can make it a nice um, bright red by adding some white to it a lot of times um, without turning it like totally pink but uh, yeah super cool right I love these. I want to make them in like stilettos and take a picture now I'm all about this look like these are cool right? Like, I would be like, look at my dope nails if I wore these. I feel a set of these coming. Like, I need to get invited somewhere cool so that I can make myself a set of these to wear to my cool place that I'm going to. So, again, just to, just to review, uh, this was our inspiration right here. Uh, and so here you can see our little crazy dotty our dotty it like it blends right in shoot might be able to just fit it in there somewhere you never even know look <laughs> almost it almost fits <laughs> but yeah it just looks like it just fits right in that little painting so super cool Okay, well, I hope you guys enjoyed that little tutorial. I love this. I'm excited about it. And if you're not a huge fan of red and orange, like, you know, you don't have to do red and orange. They would be great with a little black dress or some ripped up jeans and your super cool competition team shirt. <laughs> oh my gosh, I got sticky tack on it already. All right, so I'm going to flip back up. Um... Any questions, let me know. Uh, we have our uh, triple threat nail tech class coming up. Uh, it is at the end of August. It's at my house. It's right here. This is, I'm at my house right now. Ah, oh, feels good. Uh, so yeah, it's here at my house and I'd love to have you here. I think there's only two seats left if I'm not mistaken. So we only have two seats left. Uh, don't forget, we have Master Artist Week coming up in September in Fort Myers, Florida. We also have uh, a new Master Artist Week that we have uh, kind of unofficially posted on the website. We'll do some like marketing for it coming up this month, but um, we're looking at February. Uh, it is posted on the website, so uh, I can't remember off the top of my head what the dates are, but I feel like it's February 17th through the 20th. 3rd, February 17th through the 23rd sounds right. It will be in Englewood, Florida. Um, Englewood, Florida is uh, about an hour south of Tampa. It's about an hour north of Fort Myers. Um, I don't have a list for you yet, Nikki, but we will be getting that stuff to you uh, at probably the end of August, beginning of September. We'll definitely have it to you, so you'll have plenty of time to pack. Um, we actually provide a lot of stuff for Master Artist Week. Like, we'll give you a matte top coat, we'll give you um, a top coat gel, uh, stuff like that so that you just have your own bottle to use for the whole class. Um, we always bring a lot of gel polish, everybody kind of shares it. Um, we bring like six sets probably of gel polish for everybody to share. We have uh, the art paste for everybody to share. Um, 
so for doing like 3d art so really what you need is your brushes like I could probably tell you right now what be on the list it would be a table lamp I would be a power strip it would be an LED light um, and I would tell you to bring your brushes. You're probably going to just want to have like the loaded brush set. One of our loaded brush sets from wildflowers that we sell, um, that will have everything you need. If you can't quite do a loaded brush set yet, you could probably do a vegan brush set and like supplement a few brushes, but you're going to definitely want like a scrubby and an ombre brush. Um, and that's typically like all we tell you to bring, I mean, we'll be like, bring a phone charger, bring like, if you wear reading glasses, you know, definitely bring your reading glasses. If not, you can just buy a pair. Uh, you know, it's America. <laughs> That's, I don't, I try not to get too stressed out when I travel to things like this, because I'm like, unless I'm going to another country, then I stress. But, um, if I'm, if I'm going to be in the United States, I'm always like, oh, so I forgot my toothbrush. Like there's a CVS on every corner. So same thing. There's literally a Walgreens and a CVS right on the corner. Um, but it is the best thing about February is we are literally 10 minutes from the white sandy beaches. So we are very close to the beaches. You can stay on the beach in a beach house if you want. Um, you can stay inland. It's a beautiful area of Florida. Um, a lot of, uh, like mangroves and, um, there's, uh, I don't know, there's like state parks and Siesta Key and you can go down to Sanibel. And uh, we do like a day and a half off in the middle. I think we're gonna try to get in a dolphin cruise for everybody uh, during this Master Artist Week. So it is going to be a lot of fun. The best part about it though is if you don't have money, the temperatures in February are like 70s, typically 70s, low 80s. Um, it's been as cold as 50, it's been as hot as 90, but like on an average, I would say like low 80s, upper 70s. Um, it's beautiful there in February, but it can be chilly. Bring a sweatshirt, um, and a pair of socks. <laughs> uh, the best part about February's class is if you don't have money and you really want to come to it, but you're like, I don't have any money. There is a scholarship from CND and Beauty Changes Lives. We were a part of it too. Wildflowers was a part of these scholarships too. There was a bunch of companies that like piled up to, to be partners to make the scholarships happen, but they're giving away 20 scholarships. 10 of the scholarships are for people wanting to get their nail license, but 10 of the scholarships are continuing education scholarships and they qualify for Wildflowers Master Artist Week, which is awesome. So the class is 1,200, the scholarship's 2,000. So not only can you cover the cost of the class with your scholarship, the scholarship's also good for your travel expenses involved in going to class. So you can cover your flight, you could cover your lodging, um, whatever you wanna cover with the other $800. Uh, if you're splitting a place with a bunch of students coming to Master Artist Week, I mean, people get crazy. Like they get, yeah, yay for scholarships, I know, right? Apply, apply, y'all are crazy if you don't apply, apply. Um, apply, 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 like do whatever you have to do to apply for it. Um, but yeah, it's, it can, you can find a flight, you can fly into Sarasota, you can fly into Punta Gorda, which those are both about 45 minutes from, um, Englewood and it, uh, like Allegiant, like the cheaper airlines fly into those places in and out. They don't fly every single day of the week, but like you might be able to make it happen. Um, if you split a place with people, you can usually get a pretty decent place for like, you know, 200 bucks a night. And if like three of you or four of you are splitting it, you're talking about 50 bucks a night, which is pretty awesome. Um, you can even get it lower than that, depending on like, you know, just depends on like, sometimes people are like, I'll sleep on the couch bed. I don't care. Or I'll sleep on the couch. I just want to come to Master Artist Week. Or some people are like, I'm going to pitch a tent and sleep in a tent somewhere. <laughs> By all means, whatever you want to do. But um, I think it definitely makes it more swingable uh, if you are able to get that scholarship. So y'all do your best. I have nothing to do with like choosing who gets the scholarships. That's something that's decided by BCL. Um, and, uh, that is part of like what their job is, is to kind of like vet people, make sure their licensed nail tags, 
um, you know, they check into all of that stuff and they're the ones who make those decisions. So, um, you know, I don't know. I remember like I read what you had to do, but I'm not really sure, but I'm just telling you like, we did scholarships ourselves last year and it was really difficult picking. And I think a lot of our um, scholarship recipients are using those. So if you, Simi, if you uh, just Google search beauty changes lives, uh, scholarships, you'll find it. You will find it. So um, just look for like CND. Uh, just go, just Google search beauty changes lives scholarships. I promise it'll come up. Like promise, promise it'll come up. You'll find it. Um, they have, there's actually, when you type in beauty changes lives scholarships, it will take you like right to, I think right to the scholarship page. Um, if you just go to beauty changes lives and go to their website, um, you're going to want to click on scholarships and scholarships for nails and you'll find it there. There's not a lot. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of nail scholarships available. And, um, I, I'm trying to like help change that. I'm in a lot of people's ears about it. Like good old Aunt Jan. I'm like, I love that we were able to raise like all this money to do scholarships for, you know, this like 20 scholarship bunch. But I'm like, wouldn't it be cool if we could just like make sure there's always scholarships available like all the time? Um, I would rather like spread, not that like, I mean, I would rather if we were able to do like 30 scholarships a year between the companies that partner up, I would rather try to spread it and do like a few scholarships every, you know, or if we had to do it in quarters, um, you know, if we could do like eight scholarships a quarter, something like that to make it a little bit more consistent with availability of scholarships, that would be great. But for right now, it's like, oh my gosh, there's 10 scholarships that apply for continuing education. Thank you so much. Um, just make sure you're applying for the one for continuing education for those already licensed because there's 20 scholarships, 10 are for school, 10 are for um, advanced education that people already licensed. So if you're applying, make sure you apply um, for the right one. And it will, I think they disperse the funds in October, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so that's like the soonest you can get the funds dispersed for your class. So, um, but definitely exciting, exciting opportunity that doesn't come along very often. So take advantage while you can. Help spread the word um, if you're not someone who needs a scholarship or whatever, um, you know, help spread the word around so that people know. Sometimes a lot of people apply for these scholarships and sometimes people hardly even know about them. So you just never know when you're applying for a scholarship. So, um, you know, help get the word out because uh, those of you who've been to Master Artist Week know that it can really change your career. Uh, it can it can just change the whole trajectory of your of your time in this industry and of, of your career um, in this industry and it's super awesome. So Master Ooh, Master Artist Week is our big event. I think there's two seats left for Triple Threat and Nail Tech. Triple Threat Nail Tech, we do uh, structure, we do a day of structure, we do a day of art, and we do a day of business, which I especially love teaching. I know I don't get on here and teach business too much. Um, I don't know what the people who attended thought the business day was going to be like, uh, but, uh, you know, I don't know. I, we'll see. <laughs> Uh, I think they liked it a lot. I think they were surprised that I had so much to teach about business. So, uh, yeah, I'm super excited for Master Artist Week as well. I'm not sure if it's available for Canadians. I hope it's available for Canadians because we always have a Canadians that want to come to Florida in February. That's for sure. So, um, you know, if it's not available for Canadians, I would honestly urge you to... Um, I know this isn't going to be like an answer that you probably want, but, uh, if there's not a foundation like beauty changes lives in Canada, um, the, the people who run beauty changes lives are so cool. I bet if you were like, I'm in Canada and we need to start a scholarship program, like beauty changes lives, like, will you help us? Will you like help point us in the right direction? Can you like, you know, give us some whatever? I bet they would. Cause they're, they're really cool. They're a really great group of people and they're a great organization. And honestly, at the end of the day, like they're big advocates for school. 
um, for going to school to get your license. I think that is like number one. They're trying to continue to um, support the idea of licensure, which we all know is really important. Like if you're really trying to make a legit career out of this, you really do need to go get your license. Um, it opens so many doors for you. Uh, can you do really cool nails without having a license? Of course you can. Is it safe to do nails on other people, like out of your house without a license? No, um, it's really not. Uh, it's just really not. Now, if it's like your mom or your cousin or whatever, then like have fun, like have your girls night. I'm all about that. Like I think all of us who are licensed professionals all start that way. We're like, oh my gosh, you try to get your girlfriend to come over like, hey, can I try to do this on your nails because I just wanna see if I suck or if I could like maybe actually do this and get a license and become, you know, a licensed nail tech. Oh, and my dog is here. He's like, that's enough of Facebook Live. Woof. Oh, good. When applying for Beauty Change Lives. Oh, good. Well, hopefully, yeah. Um, I love that you just are blocking my whole view. Say hello to Sky, everyone. He likes hugs. He's a hugger. He just comes and hugs me whenever he wants a hug. It's the cutest thing. You know, I always want one of those dogs that like does really cute stuff and this dog will literally come and just hug me. I mean, he, I don't even like grab him and pull him in. He just comes and he'll just like push himself into me. Like, I need a hug. You are the sweetest big boy. Yes, you are. You're a big hundred pound hunk of fur. Slobber. <laughs> Anyway, y'all. Okay. Well, um, I had fun teaching you my little dots and stripes now. I hope you try something cool like that. Um, I did, I did a really complicated one last week. So anyway, I'm really excited for those of you who are coming to Triple Threat Nail Tech here at my house. It's going to be a loads of fun. Um, I have never had a class at my house, so I don't know what to expect, but I expect that it will be very intimate and um, awesome. So it will be the first and the last because the Master Artist Week in fall 2023 will be here. It will be kind of at my house, but it will not be at my house. It will be in our new classroom that we're building. So, um, won't actually be in my living room. <laughs> All right, y'all have a fantastic, uh, Sunday night. Uh, we've got really great things in store at Wildflowers. We're going to have some really fun guest artists doing Facebook Live. So, um, yeah, we're we're getting ready to unroll an affiliate program uh, for our master artists. So if you're a Wildflowers master artist and you're interested in becoming a Wildflowers affiliate, um, a Wildflowers, becoming a Wildflowers affiliate gives you the opportunity to, like, make money um, off of referring other nail techs to wildflowers. So if you're a master artist and you're like, I want to go into school and I want to tell everybody about wildflowers because I love wildflowers so much. Um, but it would be really cool if I could like make some kind of cut off of doing something like that. Um, that is, uh, what that's all about. So we are kind of unrolling it in stages, uh, Jotana is going to be our first official Wildflowers affiliate, so she will be starting that um, uh, beginning of August, and we're going to like, she's like our crash test dummy a little bit. Uh, we are going to, uh, you know, uh, get all of the lumps and bumps and hiccups and all of that out on Jotana, figure out all of our glitches and problems on poor Jotana because she's such a great sport. But um, so we're going to let her take it and run with it for um, probably about a month. And then we will be ready to start to enroll some of our other master artists who are interested in being an affiliate. Um, several of you I've already talked to about it, so don't feel like you need to message me. You know who you are if I've mentioned it to you over the last probably 12 months because it's something we've been talking about for a long time. Um, but yeah, we're, we're getting all of our kinks worked out, and so we will have an affiliate program starting, which is really awesome. It's awesome because like it just helps you all to... Um, like we want you to be successful. We want you to be financially successful. We have a lot of reviews from people who are like, oh my gosh, you know, um, I've doubled my income, which is like crazy, but people write us all the time and they're like, you have no idea 
Um, I was just doing plain nails before and I started adding in some of this nail art and now like everybody comes to me for art and I'm charging obviously that much more and so I'm making so much more money now that I have all this cool stuff that I can do and all these cool products and things and so anyway um, it's just another way to help I mean obviously like it benefits us at wildflowers because you're introducing us to um, and it doesn't have to it's not just for brand new people that come to wildflowers um, really like you'll have a code and um, you know, if people want to use it to make a purchase, they'll be able to, but, um, you get more of an incentive if it's somebody new, which is awesome. And then, um, you know, it helps put some money back in your pocket as a master artist, uh, which is awesome for doing something that you love anyway. And, uh, so yeah, it's a win-win for everybody. It's kind of fun. It's not like stressful or anything like that. <laughs> it's kind of fun and lighthearted. So, um, nothing to stress out about, but we are excited to be launching that program. So in light of that, we're changing up our live schedule just a little bit. Um, and so we're going to have some amazing guest artists next month. I'm trying to get Ashton to come back for, alive uh we have uh carly sneer who we've been talking to who's like next top nail artist amazing uh nail artist so we will be learning from her we have some other people like up the sleeves that we're so excited to bring you because you know we love to be able to teach you new things and i love to be able to expose you to different styles of I feel like there's just something to learn from everybody. Like I still go to classes. I love going to classes. I love listening to people teach. I love watching videos. I feel like I still have so many things that I'm learning. Um, I know a lot of stuff, uh, so I don't learn at such a fast pace anymore because like I, I just have so much knowledge in my head now. But I really, I still get so excited and so tickled when I learn something new and I get so excited to share that. And I know that the best way to do that is to surround yourself with a lot of different nail artists and a lot of different people. So um, really excited to, yeah, they do, they totally keep you fresh. You're totally right, Simi. They keep you fresh, they keep you motivated, and it's just fun. I think it's fun to, um, I think it's fun to just uh, jump in with uh, different educators and different very talented nail artists from time to time. So we're excited to uh, to bring you some some awesome guest artists and I'm really looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to watching them because I'm like, ooh, maybe I'll learn some cool stuff from our guest artists. So um, I used to love watching Ashton when she would go live. So hopefully we'll be able to, to bring her back here and there. I'd love to have her back uh, as one of our artists because she was always super amazing and she always did stuff that was like a little, a little more advanced for our people who are a little more advanced. So I'm all over the place. You never know what to expect with me. And uh, Erin also is an incredible educator. So she uh, is a lot of fun. Of course, like we're still gonna have Jotana. Jotana is just going to every other week. Um, so we're gonna, we're gonna do uh, every couple weeks uh, with Jotana. So she'll still be around, don't worry. She's still around, she's just going off to do uh, the, her affiliate thing. So it'll be exciting for her, I'm excited for her. She's, I think she's someone who's always wanted to kind of have her own like YouTube channel and, um, you know, really like spread her wings and do just be herself. And you know, when the girls come on here, I don't allow them to cuss and I don't allow them to like, you know, I, I'm like, we gotta keep this like PG rated cause I know a lot of you watch it with your kids. My kids are wanting to watch it. Um, so we do try to keep things like wholesome here at Wildflowers. How did my daughter describe us? It was so funny when we were in a marketing meeting. She was like, they're so, was it wholesome? It might have been the word that she used, wholesome. They're so wholesome at Wildflowers. And I'm like, I like that we're wholesome because I feel like there's so much of like the unwholesome out there everywhere that it's kind of fun to be like a wholesome little nail art company. So like the scariest thing is our competition crew shirts. <laughs> and I'm okay with that. So anyway, um, but yeah, Jotana, you know, she's Jotana and she's hilarious and we all love her. And so um, I'm excited to kind of see her venture off and and do her thing. And Erin is working now um, with me on like a lot of our 
um, a lot of our, how would I even put it, adult stuff. So not that like the art stuff is childish, of course, but uh, Erin is so great at being organized and she helps me so much. So she's helping me with organizing and coordinating and she does our social media posting and she's just amazing. So we're kind of taking Erin um, and Jotana and sort of like moving them up into something kind of new and exciting, which is making room for even more master artists to uh, get involved and show off. And we're working with, um, we're kind of expanding our our bucket of artists that we work with to do uh, our creative things that we do. So whether it's TikToks or whether it's pictures or whether it's videos or whether it's Facebook Lives, we're sort of expanding um, what we're doing because we're growing and it's really exciting. So I'm excited about it. I'm glad that you all are excited about it. Um, and I can't wait to see you at one of our events in the future or in our online classes. Uh, I'm gonna be working on those once we get these last couple of events for the year underway. That will be my next big project that I'm working on. We've got lots of cool new products coming this fall. So uh, I'm looking forward to it all. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you next week. And um, I'm trying to remember like who's even, I don't know, we've got cool stuff going on this week. So stick around everyone. <laughs> Bye. Have a great evening.